going on guys this is boss lp <clears throat> and welcome to my six lp ding pokemon trading card game with that come from i have no free king clue let's play this game love this game plus the music isn't lame add a name it is Ross. I'm a boss. Ross is crazy about Pokemon and Pokemon card collecting. One day, Ross heard a rumor. The legendary Pokemon cards, the extremely rare and powerful cards held by Pokemon Trading Cards Games' greatest players, the Grand Masters, and searched for one to inherit the legend. Dreaming of inheriting the legendary Pokemon cards, Ross visits the Pokemon card researcher, Dr. Mason. Yeah, this came out of nowhere. Uh. Like I said with my fifth LP, this basically means the capture card isn't working. However, I do actually have it working this time. I will have an upload this weekend. I just don't play mainstream GameCube S games during the weekend. Or the week, so. Expect that on the weekend. <clears throat> but for now. Oh, why the rush, Ross? What? You want to learn how to play the Pokemon training card game? Yeah, teach me, man. So you too finally want to start playing the card game. Well, dueling is more fun than just collecting cards. First, you should try playing with a practice deck. Here, I'll give you this deck. And now you need an opponent. Hey, Sam. Play with him for a while. Yes, Dr. Mason. Hello, Ross. Okay, let's give it a try. Hey, Ross. Hurry and come here. First, ask Sam the basics of the game. Okay, Ross. What do you want to ask about? Uh, I am good with all this. I'm basically going to be explaining how to play the game. Yeah, that's all. You see the actions speak louder in words, so let's play a game. Since this is your first time, just try to learn the basic steps. I'll be coaching you, so follow my advice. If you don't do as I say, we won't be able to proceed. Might be easier if you read the Pokemon Trading Card Game Instruction Booklet while we play. Yep, yeah, screw that. Okay, let's start with your practice game. Okay, this is an awful tutorial. I'm just going to say that right now. It gives somewhat of an explanation. However, the whole game is set. Since this is a practice, we don't shuffle the deck. Each player will draw seven cards. We explain some basic things, but the way it goes out, it's like the whole game is set. You need to learn a not set way of rules. Draw seven cards and get ready for battle. Choose your active Pokemon. This is basically how you play. You gotta choose one Pokemon to start with. You can only choose basic Pokemon as your active Pokemon. So you can choose either Goldeen or Staryu. For practice, do choose Goldeen. Yes, I would agree with that. Because we have Seeking. <clears throat> so this is basically how it works. See? That thing, and then there's that thing. Please choose a basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'll place that in the arena. Now you may choose up to five basic Pokemon to place on the bench. This is technically like a regular Pokemon games uh, team lineup. Next po Pokemon on your bench, you can switch bench Pokemon with your active Pokemon. But that normally requires energy cards. Again, only basic Pokemon can be placed on your bench. Which basically means you can't just place a Sea King onto the bench. You have to place all basic Pokemon. Pokemon can evolve through the use of placing a Evolve on their next turn. Can't be placed right away. So, start you. Mm -hmm. When you have no Pokemon to put on the bench, or if you don't want to put your Pokemon on the bench, you can press the B button to finish. However, normally you'll want to put all your Pokemon on the bench that you have. Placing the prizes. All right, the coin will be tossed aside. Who plays first? Uh, this is set right here. It will always be heads. However, in an actual game, it can actually be second. So you gotta keep watch for that. Pikachu head is heads. Nothing is tails. Choose cards from the menu and select a water energy card. Basically, what it's going to do is we're going to be placing basic energy and all that garbage onto our Pokemon in order to allow it to attack. All this explanation bullshit, let's get right to the game. Okay! We got him a chop, and we got a Goldeen. Technically, he's better powered than I am right now, so place a Water Energy on Goldeen. I got Horn Attack. See, then that's how it works. You can't just go around and attack. You have to place Energy Cards, which you draw from your hand. You can only play one a turn, and since this is the first time I played this card, I can't evolve it yet. 
Full heals are basically just a random item. You can use them to heal status effects. That'll be gotten into it later. But for right now, let's just horn attack. Bam. So that's 10 damage. That's one energy point. Everything's going to be healed in increments of 10 in this game. So that's how it works. See, there's a slow kick. However, his attack does 20 damage. Most fighting Pokemon will have pretty good attacks, but will have no extra effects. Water Pokemon normally have effects on their attacks. Your Goldeen's gonna get knocked out. Let's evolve it. If we do this, then we can help get his HP from 40 to 70 by evolving. Normally when a Pokemon evolves, our HP increases, so that's how it works. Uh, that star normal means you can attach any energy card. So we can attach a psychic energy and save our other water energy. And use waterfall. And get ready. Attach that. And now we can evolve Sea King. Well, into Sea King. We still have Horn Attack, but we're gonna want to use Waterfall. It's the better move here. He took 30 damage. Now here, I believe he's going to switch out. Yeah, I think so. Attach Fighting Energy to Radita. Or no, he's not gonna switch out. Alright, that's later then. I took another 20 damage. Crap. Alright. Sea King's got enough energy, so you don't need to attach anymore. Basically what that means is, as long as he doesn't have any other overlaying effects, don't place more energy than you have to. So now I can start working on placing some extra cards onto my other Pokemon, such as my Staryu. So in case it's thrown out into the battle at random, I can have it attack. That's the basic gist of this game. Well, somewhat. There's still a lot more, well, somewhat more to go over, in case you're a noob at this. However, I doubt you'd be watching this if you had no idea how to play. Then again, I have no idea. What do I know? Now we can just basically do a horn attack, because we don't need waterfall as a humiliation kill. Isn't that fun? Now we got one prizes. In this practice duel, both are the same, so it does not matter which one you draw. Neither will change the outflow of the battle. It's always a water energy, so... Don't worry. Now he evolved into Eradicate. Now this is a problem. Because it knows Bite. And that's going to do a good 20 damage. And I can't take this thing out completely. So this isn't looking good. When all your Pokemon are knocked out and there's no Pokemon on your bench, you lose the game. That's how it works. Put your eyes to the basic enemy and... Pokemon. Yeah. Good, blah blah blah. Attach the water energy... What? No, I want to attach a psychic energy. Why on earth would I attach a water energy? Oh, because all I have is water energy. Well, that was stupid to me. Yeah, Drowsy is a different type of psychic. Um, main thing you want to keep in mind. Uh, <clears throat> there's two ways to lose. The first way is, well, actually there's three. You can either run out of all the cards in your deck, which is a really rare occurrence and will likely happen only once if at all in this game. Or you'll run out of ba basic Pokemon, that's kind of uh, current. But the most current thing is running out of your match cards, I guess I'll call them. It's prizes. Every time you defeat a Pokemon, you draw one of your prizes. If you defeat all the Pokemon that are available for the prizes, then you lose all the prizes, then you win. I only attach you, yeah, yeah. So basically, since I've drawn all the prizes I can possibly draw, or, I mean, since there's one more, if I draw that final prize, I win. That's basically how it's gonna work. And it's gonna bite me and defeat me. There's nothing I could've done there. Draw one prize, and let's select a Pokemon to place. Choose a bench Pokemon to replace your knocked out Pokemon. You now have Drowsy and Staryu on your bench. Choose Staryu as the active Pokemon for this practice duel. Here, blah blah blah. It's, it's important to know your cards and the status of your Pokemon. Now let's play the game. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we get a Staryu and ah, classic item, the potion. Staryu evolves into Starmie. Let's get Staryu ready to use Starmie's attack command when it evolves to Starmie. Now this is why I specifically don't like this uh, version of the game. Because this is pretty much predicting that you're going to get a Starmie. Which I wouldn't mind predicting so much, however, I wouldn't put all three energies in, like, total prediction that you know you're going to get it. And this game does pretty much know for a fact you're going to get the Starmie. So, in other words, uh, this whole game is just a prediction. 
Like, right now, how was I supposed to predict he could place a Machop on the bench, he'd retreat, and then switch to this Machop? See, now this is where it got really, it gets really heated. And it looks like I'm in up oh, shit creek right now. Unless I swapped and played the Drowsy, which would have worked amazingly, because the Drowsy isn't really affected by fighting too much. That's getting into weaknesses and resistance, though, so we'll go over that later. Attach the water energy, yeah, 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 yeah. And I can also use the potion to heal my Staryu. However, it's looking right now that Staryu is pretty much screwed. Because even with full health again, and me getting the first attack off, it'll only take two hits for my chop to defeat me, and I won't be able to get three hits off. And it seems like he's getting ready to evolve his Machop. However, is he going to get to? I don't know. But now we finally get the saving grace, our Starmie. You have finally drawn the Starmie card. Choose Starmie from your hand and use it to evolve the star you. You've already attached enough energy to your Star Freeze. Attack your opponent with Starmie Star Freeze. Now let's play the game. Which means it can place the final water energy on Drowsy for no real reason, and finally evolve the Starmie. And recover, that just basically heals some HP. Star Freeze has an added effect of paralyzing. Paralyzing is one of the deadliest uh, status ailments in this game, in fact. Every single time you get a heads, the Pokemon will be prevented from doing anything on their next turn. And of course, this game's going to make it uh, an always head game. Say, so look, he's forever, he's paralyzed. He can't attack. He can't do anything. Basically, you can attach energies to him. You can do all that, but he can't attack, which is one of the most important things in this game. However, after every turn, he's recovered from paralysis. I'll get into what the other ones do later. Now Machop has only 10 HP left. Let's finish this battle. Attack with Stormy Star Freeze. Also, something else you can't do while you're paralyzed, you can't switch out. Which is a really deadly strategy. Because switching out can prevent you from losing your prizes. But, let's just end the game already. This is practice mode, so please follow my guidance. Do it again. Crap, I accidentally... Whoops, I accidentally hit recover. Uh, yeah, give that back to Drowsy and... Star Freeze. Browser's check doesn't even matter at this point, but it's going to give me heads anyway, and goodbye. And that's some of the gist of how you play the game. I'll be going over a bit more later. And that's all the prizes. Decision is, Sam blows, and I win. Basically, this is how you play the Pokemon trading card game. It's a game in which you try to knock out as many of your opponent's Pokemon as there are prizes. That's the gist of it, like I just said. If you don't understand something, talk to Sam. It might be helpful to practice again, too. This time was just practice, so I had you follow everything I said, but there are other styles of play. So try them out by choosing Normal Duel. Yep. Now then, let's build your deck. Did you bring your cards? Handed his cards to Dr. Mason. Hmm, let me add some of my own cards to yours. Now, Ross, what kind of deck do you want? Here's basically like pitting your starter Pokemon. Please select the deck you want. You get Charmander and Friends, Squirtle and Friends, and Bulbasaur and Friends. In this game, uh, Charmander will ultimate. Ultimately, you want to pick the deck with your favorite like Pokemon. Do you want a Charizard, a Blastoise, or a Venusaur? Ultimately, in this game, you'll get the ability to get them all. So it doesn't really matter. It matters much less in this game than a regular Pokemon game. Personally, I prefer Blastoise out of all the other ones. In this game, at least. In an average Pokemon game, I prefer Venusaur, so I picked that. But now, let's just pick Squirtle and Friends. Yes. <clears throat> okay, here are the remaining cards. Receive 30 cards. <clears throat> you should duel with many different people. Why don't you go get one of the card clubs? There are many people playing there at the clubs. Collect new cards and try building a new deck. And with that, let's go over some of the menu items. Start. Diary. This is basically how you save the game. Cool. No, I don't want to save again. Ah, oh, why not? Alright, then there's your deck. This is where you basically is one of the coolest features. You get to make a deck. I love that idea. And also, you get to modify your deck, 
do stuff like that. Plus, this is really easy to use. It's a really nice interface, and I really like this. Card basically lists all your cards. Configuration, message speed, <clears throat> fast to slow, dual animation, show all, uh, I guess. Status, and Master Metals is basically this game's version of, uh, uh, I guess you'd call them bad, yeah, badges, badges. Also, this game has an amazing run feature. This is the first Pokemon game, I think, to have a run feature. Don't quote me. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm almost 100% sure it is. In fact, I'm 100% sure it is. This is the first game with a running feature. That's Pokemon. Back here on the chalkboard, he has more information. And computers. These are important in the game. Not for much, but reading mail. Basically, uh, the doctor will send you mail. And it'll basically tell you about getting the hang of the games. And every single mail, the main reason for reading these is... He'll give you a booster pack. In every single booster pack, you will get a star card, three uh, of those cards. <clears throat> I'll basically go over this. Like, a star card basically means it's rare. These mean they're uncommon, and these mean they're common. So, looking at these cards, I got an okay go. Hitmonchan is pretty good. I could maybe add him somehow. I'll be seeing you useful information by mail. I've also attached a boost pack. Yes, I already know that. Print is that boring stuff. The glossary will go over all the supplies. Card album. This is interesting. Uh, I have 40 out of 56 Coliseum cards. That's like out of each booster pack. Evolution, I only have 12 out of 50. Mystery, I only have 2 out of 51. And Laboratory, I have 0. That's going to be special cards, like special one-of-a-kind cards only added to this game. So, with that, that's basically almost everything I want to go over next time. Actually, you know what? Why don't I show the overfield first? Here's the overfield. We got a ton of places we can go right now, and that's one of the things I love about this game. So... What do you say next time we go to the Pokemon Dome? I think that should be a good first place to start. Next time on Pokemon Trading Card Game, we're heading to the dojo. Or the dome. Thunderdome. Not Thunderdome, though. See you guys next time.